pulled out some of my old notebooks. And this was in Blecon. He used to teach these crazy workshops all summer long. We were just mad at <laughs> 10 hours of yoga a day. And this was in 2001. So a long time ago. I we thank you for this practice. And so gathering all of your stuff and let's meet on the mat and begin together. In Sukhasan with some height. Pulling the sit bones back and out to the side several times, really being on the inner edge of the sit bones. Relax the ankles, relax the knees, relax the thighs, let them flow downwards towards the ground. Moving the tailbone forward so that gently it feels the back of the pubic bone. And then with the start of the inhale, lift the pubic bone up. Lift the belly button in and up. Feel the ribs lifting. Feel the sternum lifting. Feel that new space. The elbows back. The front shoulders back. And all of the muscles of the back flowing down towards the ground. Lifting the hands and pressing the palms together firmly. The chin lowering towards the chest. And visualizing the brain traveling down the neck, the throat. To take a new seat behind the sternum plate, behind the heart. Inhale. Grip the knees up, grip the thighs up. And pull with the fingers on the elbows, pulling them down towards the ground. Lengthening the waist, lengthening the spine. Make sure that you're standing on the four wheels of each of your feet. So examining each foot, seeing on the right foot, are you leaning in too much? Are you leaning out too much? How could you establish the four wheels in that foot? And then doing the same with the left. The four wheels of the left foot, neither accentuating the outer wheels too much or the inner wheels too much, but the four wheels pressing down and from that re-gripping the thighs up all the way up the length of the femur bone. That top third being the hardest part of the femur bone to reach. You really have to pull the muscle all the way up 
And when you get it to that top third, that's when you feel the femur bone coming into the hip sockets. And then releasing the hands to the floor, bending the knees, spreading the fingers widely, and stepping back with sharpness to our first Adho which I always love to do with lifted heels so that we can really extend into the full spine. So lift those heels and spread the toes. And even though the head and the face are relaxing, the body is becoming sharper. The front thighs are pushing back continually. And then looking up and walking the feet forward. Second hanging with the last hand, changing the cross of the arms from the first one. Keep seeing how you can grip those quadriceps all the way up to the very top of the femur bone. And how similarly you can feel the inner thighs from the inner knees to the inner groins consistently lifting up, up, up as you pull the elbow tips down. Preparing to come up, press into the feet, press into the heels firmly, regrip the legs. Inhaling up, stretching the arms, open the chest, and exhaling. All right, we're coming on to the mat now on to our backs for a series of Supanagashasana works. So let's grab a strap and make a loop on the strap and meet on the mat. So we're now coming into Supanagashasana 1, lateral Supanagashasana, and then the hip opening Supanagashasana, Parivrita Supanagashasana, Supanagashasana 1, and releasing on each side. So starting with the right leg from Supanagashasana. Bending the knee, placing the loop on the arch of the foot, stretching the legs, and sliding the hands down. Sharpen the ankles. Sharpen the knees. Sharpen the elbows, make sure the arms are stretching. As you begin to draw the leg closer, resist firmly with the front of the thigh, push it away from you.
And then releasing the leg a little bit, preparing for lateral supravarimusasan. And Fayek really like to insist on coming down in increments. So pulling the leg towards you a little bit and then coming out to the side. Towards you and to the side. Towards you and to the side. Like a little stairway that allowed the vehicle to enter this pose with less resistance. Being sure to grip the outside edge of that right thigh. Locate the entire outside edge of the right femur bone, the flesh around it, the muscle, and grip it up as you push out through the ball of the foot, pull with the hand and push against the strap. And then bring the leg back up, widening this loop. And bringing this arm behind the head, this leg towards us, the foot towards the shoulder. And extending this arm on the thigh. Trying to find the action of Balakonasana in this right leg. So the inner groin roll into the outer groin. And when we find that movement, the foot starts to come closer and closer. And then releasing. And now tightening the loop up a little bit perhaps. Reaching with the left arm. Parivurita, supraparimushtasa. Firm the knees, press the left heel down. Also coming down in increments. Towards us and across, towards us and across, towards us and across. Keep that left leg extended, rolling in as much as possible. The thigh, the left leg rolling in. And now roll the thigh, the right thigh in also. Push with the length of the foot against the strap and pull with the hand on the strap, turning and twisting. And then bring the leg back up. And again, super pranusha sandwa. Reroll the left thigh and press the heel down. Draw the right leg closer and closer, but press the front thigh to the bone. Continually ironing that front thigh to the bone. And then bring the leg back up. And finding Sutta Tarasa. Roll the shoulders back. And changing sides. Left leg. Supta Paranushasana 1. The arms sliding back. Stretch the arms. Press the right heel down. Sharpen the ankles. Firm the knees, firm the elbows. Feel the waist stretching with each inhale, the arms reaching the waist stretching. And looking at the front thigh, iron the curve of the front thigh to the thigh bone. 
So it flattens, so it's moving away from you as you draw the leg closer. And then releasing the leg a little bit. Lateral Supapanujasana. Coming down in increments. Pulling the leg towards you and out, towards you and down, towards you and down, towards you and down. And then sucking the outside edge of that left thigh upwards. So finding everything that's lining the outside of that left femur bone, left hip, the skin, the flesh, the fat, the muscles, everything, and gripping it in and up as you pull the foot higher and push out through the foot. And then bring the leg back up, widening that loop just enough so that you can bring the arm behind the head and the foot towards the shoulder. Pull the toes back and make sure the outside edge of the foot is active, traveling up the outer leg to the outer hip. And find the balakonasan action of the groin to help bring that foot closer. So the inner groin rolling to the outer groin. And then releasing and change, shortening the loop a little bit, changing hands, preparing for Parivrita Supaparamushasana, entering incrementally. Little movements, pulling towards you and down, pulling towards you and down, until the elbow rests on the floor. Keep that right thigh rolling in. And extend out through the inner knee, the inner foot. Spread the balls of the feet. Pull the toes back. And now also roll the left thigh, the top thigh, in. And feel how that action broadens the hips. Turning and twisting. And then bringing the leg back up. And the last, Supta Paranusasa. Stretching the arms back, pulling the leg even closer. Make sure that right thigh is still rolling in. And keep ironing the front thigh to the thigh bone, pushing it away from you, resisting as you draw the leg closer. Exhaling and releasing into Supatharasa, lining the inner feet up, rolling the shoulders back, sacrum towards the heels. And then rolling over to the right and coming back up. 
Right, if memory serves me correctly, I'm going to check our little fight video sequence here. We are about to get a chair. Let me be sure. Yes, indeed. We need a chair and we're going for Barbajasans with a blanket folded between the knees. So, gathering all that, let's meet back on the mat. I have a little height so that the chair is just right for me and a blanket that we can fold between our knees and specifically it's a stepping through the back of the chair of Anvajasan. Let me move back to be sure that I'm fully in the camera. All right, a blanket and we're folding it in three. And then in half. And that is going between our inner knees. And we're making sure that our knees are over our heels, our feet are parallel, our toes are spread. So this width helps us to get a nice turningness in the inner hips, some freedom in the inner hips and more ability to twist. Now let's widen our sit bones apart, pulling them back and out. It's two actions. Another point he was very specific about. Okay, we're turning to the right first. So the hand coming to the railing, the arm extending, inhale. And exhale, going around the corner of the chair and curling the fingers underneath the seat of the chair. Keep pressing the inner knees into the blanket. Feeling the inner groins of both of your thighs moving down towards the chair. And feel how this widens the sit bones apart very naturally. The sit bones pressing down. Now as you start the inhale, start from the pelvic floor, tighten and lift up and lengthen the whole front spine and then exhale and turn and twist. Now re-squeeze the knees against the blanket. Feel the inner groins of both of your thighs rolling down towards the chair, the sit bones widening. As you inhale, start from the pelvic floor, tighten, lift up, open the chest more and exhale, Twist around that, rolling the right shoulder back. And then coming back to the center, checking the feet. Re-squeezing the inner knees and re-pulling the sit bones back and out to the side to correct any unconscious turning open of the roots of the thighs so that the groins can go down to the chair and affect the inner width of the inner hips. All right, turning to the left, holding the chair. And exhale around the corner of that chair. Keep feeling the inner groins of the thighs moving towards the chair, moving down and the sit bones widening. Press both sit bones down and with the start of the next inhale, tighten the pelvic floor and begin to lift up inside. Feel the organs lifting. The front spine opening, the chest opening, and turning and twisting around that. Keep the feet firm, the inner knees pressing. The sit bones sharp but broadening. And starting each inhale from the base of the pelvic floor and inhaling, lifting up. And exhale, twisting around. And then coming back through the middle, checking the feet. Second time to the right, wrapping the arm around. Mm. 
connecting with those alignments, those refinements, igniting them. And then bringing our attention to the right shoulder, the front shoulder and the back shoulder and the right shoulder blade. And as you roll the front of the shoulder back, press the shoulder blade forward and observe how that impacts the right chest, the right armpit, the right side ribs. And keep exploring that action. With each exhale, press the right shoulder blade forward as you peel the front shoulder back. And then back through the middle. Check the feet, reconnect to the inner knees, widen the sit bones apart in case they come close again. And to the left. Keep squeezing the blanket, widening the sit bones apart, pressing the front thighs down. And with the inhale, reigniting the pelvic floor, lift up that inner organic lift, the chest opening. And now focusing on the left shoulder area, front, back and shoulder blade. And try to roll the front of the left shoulder, open more and more. And to press the shoulder blade forward. With each breath, accentuating that awareness, that understanding. And then exhale. And we're going to release. We're now going to sit normally on the chair, moving this blanket, which we're going to roll and place in the organic body. For a yoga mudrasana action, chair pavana mudrasana, so to speak. So, taking this blanket. sitting right back on the chair and making this little roll for the organic body, lifting up and over and exhaling down. If you're able to reach back and hold the back legs of the chair, keep releasing the back of the neck. And keep pressing into the feet so that the legs are activated and you are inviting the femur bones into the hip sockets. Rather than pushing them out, you're drawing them in. And then releasing the hands and making our way back out. Right, we're now coming for shalabhasans on the chair. So we're going to want to have a blanket on the mat if needed for the pubic bone. And then the chair in front for our hands and our wrists. Coming to lie down. And adjusting the chair forward or backwards so that we start off with the lower seat so that you can extend your arms and place the inner wrists right on the edge of the seat there. So you want to have the chair far enough away that you're getting your maximum extension that the rib cage is able to move forward. Now just roll the thighs in towards each other and feel your sit bones broadening. Now press the coccyx down. That's it. Stretch the arms. 
See if you can feel the waists of the trunk broadening and maximize that with the breath. Lift the side ribs up, extend, restretch the arms, lower the head. See if the rib cage can move forward on the mat to the abdominal cavity, having more space. Press the shoulder blades down the back and forward to help open the chest and the side ribs and the armpits. Now keeping the inner wrists on the chair, lift the hands up and then lower the hands back down to the seat of the chair and then lift the hands up and then lower them back down. Keep the arms strong, the elbows firm, the shoulders broad, lift the hands up and lower them back down. And back up. And back down. Last one, back up. And back down. And then lift the head and bring the elbows down and release. Ika Padabikasa. Coming onto the left forearm and the right leg, reaching for the foot, pressing down. And changing side. And coming out. Second of Basan, we have a choice. We can go up higher if we feel that we're ready for it. Otherwise, we're staying on the seat. Same work. So testing. And if that feels too much, you immediately know. So you'll go back down to the seat. The hands down, the inner wrists against the edge. Roll the front thighs in. And feel the inner groins go to the sky and the sit bones widen. And between the sit bones, press the coccyx down. Keep extending the arms. Find your shoulder blades. And with an exhale, move the shoulder blades down the back. And simultaneously, press them forward. And with the inhale, examine what's being opened in the front chest, the side chest, the breast chest, the armpit area. Now lower the head down even more. Keep the arms extended. Now we're gonna lift the hands up and down. Ready, lifting the hands up and down and up and down and again up and down. Two more times, lifting them up and down, pressing to the top of the feet, press the coccyx down. Last one, lifting up. And down. And then the head coming back up and releasing. And coming out, taking a breath. And on the top foot, pressing down. And 
to change insides. And back out. Right, we're just coming up onto the knees, moving this chair just a little bit away. Moving this blanket, taking the strap, and Sutta Paramushasan 1. From Sutta Dadasana. Lifting the right leg. And finding Sutta Paramushasan. Lift the side ribs of the lungs and resist with the fronts of the thighs. Press them away from you. And then bring the leg back down, Supatrasan. And left leg. Roll that right thigh and press the heel down. And re-stretch the arms, drawing the leg closer and resisting with the front of the thigh. And then coming back down. Sutta All right, rolling over, and we are now coming into standing poses. So let's see what he had lined up for us on this day <laughs> 21 years ago. So we're going to be doing Tripanasana, followed by Bhadavajasana on the chair. Shalabhasana on the chair, and then a round of Sutta Parameshasans, and then coming back up for our next standing pose. So, let's get ready for that. If you like blocks for your hands, make sure to have them ready from Tarasa. Bending the knees, and jumping, extending, Right leg turning open. Lift the chest, inhale. Exhale, Utsitasvikarasa. Squeeze the back of the knee and push the curve of the back thigh to the thigh bone. Stretch the arms apart from the center of the chest. Turning and twisting, using that hand on the bottom leg to turn and twist more and more. And then inhaling up and turning to the left. Inhale, exhale, Uchita Trikarasa. Keep lifting the inner arch of the back leg and squeeze the back inner knee and push the curve of the back thigh to the thigh bone. Bring the trunk back so the crown of the head is aligned with the anal mouth and stretch the arms apart from the center of the chest, turning and twisting. And inhaling up, turning the feet in, and jumping the feet together. And 
and a blanket between the legs. Fold it in through. And then in half for that thickness. Spread the toes, activate the outside edges of the feet. Twisting to the right. Six breath cycles with each exhale, activating the twist more intensely. Choose the middle. Sit tall, sit straight, rewind the buttock bones. And to the left. Six breath cycles. Each exhale, twisting. Front, stepping out, keep this blanket folded like this because we'll be coming back to it obviously, and moving the chair to the front, Shalabhasana. You have the choice of height, either the seat or the highest height. Roll the thighs in. Hands down and lowering the head. Trapezius muscles going down the back, shoulder blades going down the back, and shoulder blades pressing forward. And now, lifting the hands up and down, up and down, up and down, holding it here, broaden the shoulders, activate the legs, press the tailbone forward to the ground, and then releasing and coming down. Our strap is there, moving this blanket, we're lying right on the mat, taking the strap from Sutta Dasa. First of all, oops, let me get my arms under the chair. Sutta Karanusha one to your maximum, but resist with the front thigh. Stretch the waist. And now, lateral Sutta Parimushasana. Coming down in increments. And gripping the outside edge of that right thigh in and up. The arms opening from the center of the chest. And now back up and widening that loop. And coming in, drawing the foot closer so that it's close to the inner left shoulder, pulling the toes back, activating the outside edge of the foot, the palm of the left hand, if possible, on the left thigh, pressing the curve of the thigh down. Now, 
La recuerda sale del ex. And then coming back up, left hand holding the strap, Padivita Sutta Padivishasan, coming down in increments. Rolling this top hip towards that left foot. Twisting to the right. And then bringing the leg back up and Sukhatarasa. Left hand side, Sukhatarasana one. Roll that right thigh in, press the heel down. Iron the front thighs to their respective thigh bones. And draw that left leg closer, but keep resisting with the front thigh. And now lateral sutta manusasa, coming down in increments. Little stairways, stairways to heaven. That right heel firm. And gripping the outside edge of the left thigh in and up. Shoulders rolling back. And then the leg coming back up, wide in the loop as needed. Left arm coming behind, right hand pulling the foot in so that the inner foot is coming close to the inner right shoulder and then pressing the curve of the right thigh down with the right hand. And then releasing from that, and Parivrita Sutta Parimushasan. Right hand holding. From the legs, sharpen the ankles, coming down in increments. Roll this top left hip down to the foot. Feel the left abdomen open, the left waist open. Turning and twisting. And then bring the leg back up. And Sutta Tarasa. And now, rolling back over, coming back out, and coming back up for Pashva Konasa. From Tadasana. Bending the knees, lifting the elbows, and jumping to the right. 
Inhale, lift the chest. And exhale, making that square and coming down. Turning this top arm. And extending. Parashvakarasa. Squeeze the back of the knee and iron the front thigh back to the thigh then. And with each exhale, press the outside edge of your front thigh against the arm and turn and twist. Now find the middle waist, and from the middle waist to the fingers, stretch in one direction, and from the middle waist to the outside edge of the back foot, stretch in the other direction. Feel the split in the waist from that action as you twist. And then bring the arm back up, and back up. Turning the feet in. And jumping the feet together. Tadasa. Left hand side. And jump. Preparing. Lift the chest. Inhale. Make a square and coming into stage one. Turn the top arm and extend. Keep lifting the inner arch of the back foot, push into the outside edge, squeeze the back of the knee and iron the front thigh to the thigh bone. And now push the outside edge of that bent leg into the arm and turn and twist from there. Now split the waist in two. From the middle waist to the fingertips, from the middle waist to the outside edge of the foot, stretch, turn, twist, and three, and two, and one. Arm back up, coming out. And jumping the feet together. Tadasa. Taking the chair. Bada Bajasa. And the other blanket that we had left for between our knees. Checking the feet, spreading the toes, widening the sit bones. To the right. Keep rolling the front of the right shoulder open and purposely pressing the shoulder blade forward to further lift the right chest. Feel the back armpit coming to the front armpit. Through the middle, rewind the buttons and to the left. Press the inner knees against the blanket. Both hands useful and helping in different ways. And keep rolling the front shoulder back and pressing that left shoulder blade forward and feel the new opening that you're getting in the left chest, the left ribs and the back armpit coming to the front armpit. Back to the middle. 
hands coming out, Shalabhasan. So moving our little folded blanket aside, up chair. And in we come on the height that is right for us. The thigh is rolling in. And lifting the hands up, the inner wrists, pressing down whatever edge we've chosen, lowering the head, moving the trapezius muscles down the back, don't let them hunch up. And now lift the hands up and then back down. Lift the hands up and then back down. One more time. Lift the hands up and then back down. And that gently releasing. Eka para Vikasa. And changing sides. And coming out. Right, it's now time for Vajrasana. No strap, knees a little bit apart, we're coming for shoulder openers. Bring the hands behind the back, interlock the fingers together, roll those front shoulders back and lift the arms up. And now invert the hands so you're pressing the palms up towards the sky now. And then turn the hands back in. Re-roll the shoulders back and re-stretch the arms up. And then lowering the arms halfway down and change the interlock to the other little pinkies underneath and relift. And now invert the hands and press up through the heels of the hands. And then turning the hands back in. Exhale and releasing the arms down all the way, resting here, deep inhalation, deep exhalation, release the shoulders, release any tension in the throat, in the neck, in the jaw.
and then rolling back up and lying down on our mats. Supta Paragushtasana. From Supta Tarasana. Right leg fast. Roll that left thigh in and resist the thighs away from you as you draw the legs closer and closer and closer. And then back up and we're changing sides immediately. From Suttakarasana Changing to the left, Sutta Parangustasana 1. The closer you bring that leg, the more you resist with the front thigh. And then bring the leg back up. Sutta Tadasan. And roll the yoga. And back to shoulder openers. This time a lateral shoulder opener is one of Fike's favourites, I think. One of the only poses that would have gotten through how tight my shoulders were. So coming down, interlocking the fingers behind the back, stretching the arms up. Remember the arms start from the centre of the chest. Okay, we're going to the right first. So we lift the abdomen, we turn it to the left, and we bring the forehead back to the floor. And the arms are coming to the right. And I always used to say that it was important that the bottom arm was inviting the top arm to come across and lower. And then the arms coming back up. And now the arms will come to the left and our abdomen will come to the right. Forehead back to the mat and bringing the arms across. And back up to the middle. Remember which little pinky is underneath. And then exhale, release the arms and rest completely. Changing the cross of our arms so the other little pinky is underneath. And re-rolling the front shoulders back. The arms are coming to the right first, the abdomen is turning to the left. That bottom arm is inviting the top arm over.
and back to the middle. These can be torturous, I know. <laughs> last time, last side. Arms over to the left, abdomen to the right, and forehead, the center of the forehead, back to the mat. The hard part is how you roll the front of the bottom shoulder open and get that bottom arm to pull the top arm over, to invite it over. And then bringing the arms back up one more time, really stretch them up. And then exhale and release completely into the ground. And then rolling back up and coming to stand. Right, our last and final standing pose of our sequence. We're coming for Vira Padrasana 1. From Tarasa. And jumping. Turn the arms, the palms open, spiraling the shoulders open. Lifting up higher than a semicircle, making an ellipse going as high as you can, and then turning to the right, relift the arms, lift the chest, firmer into the thighs, inhale and exhale, making that square. Keep pulling the arms up and back. Press the back heel down, roll the back thigh in, and iron the curve of the right thigh to the thigh bone. Keep pulling the arms up, like all of the Sutta Panamushasans we've been doing with the arms above the head. Get that lift, and three, and two, and one. Inhaling up, turning through the middle, extending, and jumping the feet together. That is it. Left hand side, ready, and jumping, extending, roll the arms, extend through the inner arms, lift the arms up with vibrancy. Pull higher, make an ellipse. Turning to the left. Firm the roots of the thighs. Lift the chest. Inhale. And exhale. Vira Badrasana. Keep rolling the back thigh in and ironing the curve of the thigh to the thigh bone. Lift the chest, lift the arms, pull, get that length of the waist. And three, and two, and one. Inhaling back up. Turn back to the front, press into the heels, and extend. Vale, vale. By now we know what we're doing here, so grabbing everything and coming in. Why are we on sit The inner 
groins rolling down to the mat, twisting to the right. Press the heels down. Press the outside edges of your feet down. But squeeze the inner knees against each other. Keep lifting the center chest. And back to the middle. When the sit bones. And to the left. Press the front thighs down. Press the feet down. Outer edges of the feet. Inner knees squeezing. Lift the chest. And back to the front. And coming out of the chair. And now I think there's something unusual coming up, so let me check on his sequence. Where are we? Oh, yes. We have Yoga Mudrasana on the chair before going back to Shadavasana. So let's take this blanket, make our roll, prepare, drawing the flesh of the belly, the organs up and over, coming forward. And then reaching for the back rungs, for the back legs, dropping that. Smell the breath out, relax the brain completely. One last shalabhasan. So let's move that chair forward. Blanket to the ground. We're rolling the thighs in. Using the height that works for us. And lowering the head. Be sure to keep the legs charged, the tailbone pressing forward. The arms extended and active. That's how we're getting this whole new opening in the chest, in the upper back, in the side ribs, and we're getting that new length in the waist. And now we lift the hands up and back down and lifting them up and back down. Last time, lifting them up and back down. Trapezius muscles going down the back. Stretch those armpits open. And 
Then sliding back down. Hmm. Such an incredible pose, that one. Hmm. And Eka Pada Vikasa. And then changing sides. And coming out. Moving this blanket, perhaps moving the chair a little bit, taking a strap and coming back to the mat for some last Sutta Parangrajasas from Sutta Tadasa. Right leg, Sutta Parangrajasa, one, the leg coming even closer now. And extend those arms, bring your Shalabhasan into your Sutta Parangrajasa. Keep resisting with the front thighs. And now bring the leg up a little bit, widen the loop if you need it a little bit wide. Four, arm behind the head, and drawing this foot in, Badakamasana action, in a groin roll into the outer part. Feel that beautiful opening you're getting in the right armpit here as you allow the elbow to move back. You press it with your head. Stretch that right waist. Stretch the right armpit. And then back up, and the final Padivita, changing hands, left hand, coming down in increments. Towards you down, towards you down. And on this last Padivita, so the one of the day, this leg, let the foot roll open. Still keeping the knees firm. And as you're twisting, feel those back ribs. How much more fluid they are now after our Badamajasans and Shalabasans. And let them roll the right shoulder blade to the left. And then the leg coming back up. Sutta Terasa. And our last cycle of Sutta Parangusha one. And these layered repetitions, I'm so very fake in these workshops. Really moving through all the resistance of the outer layers of the body, getting deeper, deeper, deeper. And you feel the mental resistance, you know, no, not another round, just sit down and just But then when you let go to that, feel how differently open we are now. Giving thanks to that. Thank you, Faik. Keep drawing the leg closer, resisting with the front thighs. And stretching the arms to that maximum opening of the waists the armpits. And then releasing the leg a little bit, if you need to widen the loop, do so. And let's come in. And now let the weight of the skull 
nudge that left arm, left elbow back. Feeling this whole new opening here. Breathe into this area. Expand it, fill it, inhabit it. Finally releasing, and our last and final body vidita supta Straighten the knees, coming in with incremental little movements, and on this last one, allowing this extended leg to roll open so the outside edge of the foot is on the floor. Try to really feel the back body here. The front chest open, of course, but feeling the actions of the back body, the left shoulder blade moving towards the right with the exhale. Feel how the ribs follow, feel how that adds to the depth of our twisting. And now, Sutta Parakanasana, no equipment. So we have to lift the hips up, bring the buttocks closer to the heels, take hold of your outer ankles, roll each shoulder back and really hold the front ankles, and then the knees opening. The feet can move forward a little bit, keep the hips lifted, and keep the shoulders rolled back. And when you've got the outside edge of the feet on the mat, then lower the hips, but move the anal mouth towards the heels. So don't just drop the buttocks down or your lower back will arch too much. Sacrum towards the heels, anal mouth towards the heels, re-rolling the shoulders back and pressing the shoulder blades up. Lengthen the breath, deepen the breath. And then release the hands from the ankles and rolling over to the right hand side. 
And we are ending with a Sutta Bhattanasan or with our bolster, our blankets, a strap, and perhaps locks underneath the outer thighs. And then from there, we'll be coming out into a chair shavasana. So you might as well have that ready. Your calves will come onto here. So blocks for the outer thighs if your groins like that support. And otherwise that's coming in. Strap is nice and low. And coming back. Sacred moving towards the heels, anal mouth towards the heels. Arms extended down to the side. Closing the eyes, and we'll be here for three minutes. We'll dry you one breath. And then lifting the hands and just releasing the strap enough to bring the feet out and rolling over to the side. Important not just to sit up but roll over. And it's now time for Shavasana.
take the strap and lose that strap over my eyes. Really feel the left and back right hip comfortable and even on the ground. And the abdomen area here receding, melting towards the lower back. And now let's place a little bit of eye covering and a little bit of outer ear covering before extending the arms diagonally away, adjusting our shoulders and our shoulder blades one last time. Exhale. Inhale. And exhaling into Shavasana.
lifting the hands and having them rest on the abdomen. And marching gently. And then folding the palms together in front of the center of the chest. Luka samastaha sukino bhavatu. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. May the universe know love, may the universe know peace. And may we help all those that we come into contact with to feel the same. Om Peace. Removing gently the strap from the eyes, keeping the eyelids closed, just allowing first the light to come through the eyelids. Noticing how that activates the mind state in a certain way. And then the eyelids can open and they can close again. They can open and close until they feel ready to open. And then rolling over. And coming back out. And welcome back. Our practice is complete. Thank you for joining me on this fight video. Practice. Thank you for joining me here today to thank him for everything that he's brought me, that he's brought you, that he's brought us, and to support his soul resting on its journey in peace. Namaste. Hope we practice again together soon.